All available experts, please report to room A9. Hello everybody, my name is Possessed, Hood416, you can call me Possessed. We're Today, we're talking about Google Blitz, but actually we're talking about with quirks. You can see there's quirks down here. Um, but first, I want to make a couple of statements. To, there's a couple of statements to be made, especially if you've recently watched Garuda's video. Uh, Gerudo's tutorial on Google Blitz, which does not include quirks. I'm, uh, first of all, I'm gonna assume that you already know roughly how Google Blitz works. I am going, for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to notate the particles as red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. Instead of what the manual refers to, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple, violet, I believe. This is because this is these are the colors that I see. I got a terrible example here by not getting cyan or blue, but yeah. So keep that in mind. Second point: the Google Blitz itself is much smaller. It's much easier to see the orbs. Third point: only the colored particles appear now. So before you'd have all seven particles, but it's like. Four of them would be colored white. To recover stages, you cannot press the module to to get the previous stage. No, that doesn't happen anymore. You won't get strike, but it won't do anything. You can recover stages at the end though, and it's way easier. Let's just get into submission mode real quick. Um. So during submission mode, the lit particles look different. Before they were actually colored, now it's just always white. As you can see, you can very easily see that there's only one white particle. I am using faster pulses. This is pulse length of one. You can change it in mod settings. Now, so let's actually demonstrate how to recover stages. Let's input a wrong sequence. So this is how you recover stages. The module will show you a one stage, which is actually the XOR version of the first two stages. If you quickly tap the module again, then it shows you the XOR values of the third and fourth, and so on, so on, so on. To return to submission mode, all you gotta do is hold, and then your Google Blitz will be some color that isn't black. Also, um, when, Gar when Garuda was doing this, you'd have your binary string of seven digits, or, yeah. When Garuda was doing this, they were divided up as R, XXX, YYY. And actually now, they're divided differently, being XXX, YYY, R. Now, the violet bit is, or the purple bit, bit corresponds to whether you're, you're moving um, clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm also going to be using the extended the extended table because I cannot be bothered to do to use this one seven separate times. Eight actually, but yeah. Which, this just makes life a lot easier. Um, thank you, I think VFly made this. Th thank you VFly for the extended. Thank you, Luminosity Tim, for the interactive, which we'll be using during the Violet Quirk, because that affects wrapping rules. So, I'm not gonna do this one, but I'll give you a quick refresh on how Google Blitz works. I probably should have hit free try. Alright, I believe this is my final sequence, which is on um, red, orange, yellow, green, sand, blue, purple, which is one zero 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 one zero. That was my final thing. Double checking. Yep, looks like it. So this is my thing. I have two lit uh, particles, whatever whatever they're called. Um, this is my x value. This is my y value. And then this column. So then my first digit is a zero. I'm not starting north. I'm going um, clockwise two. Actually, no, it's always clockwise in the first one. One, two, yep. And I'm always going clockwise by three. 
Also, this is how I do Kuga Blitz. I just grab all the things immediately. And the way I know how it's it's right is if um, sign line if two things line up very well. So this sign lines up with magenta. So let's grab my digits. Um, zero. Three plus five is eight, which modulus two is one. Emergency clear. That's five. No, please return to your stations. Um, that's ten, twelve. Twelve modulus seven is five. Um, four, nine, ten, twelve, eighteen, four, I believe. Four, seven, discard. Five, two, discard, two. Let's see. 10, 14, discard, 6, 3, 9, becomes 2. So this is my final sequence. Uh, Prepend 1, convert it into the binary thing. Let's get rid of the spaces. Yeah, um, I'm gonna skip the part where you do I, P, P, I, blah, blah, blah. I didn't just immediately go to this because I memorized the rules. And. Sorry, um. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, get, I got it. Okay, this is our sequence. Uh, since fossils are faster, this mission will go by much faster. Okay, cool. Three minute Google Blitz. So let's get into quirks, shall we? Um, the quirks are kind of ordered from easiest to most difficult. And if you're not familiar with how to use the mod settings, um, the quirks are they are most likely sh to show up if you want to make them show up more often. They're all e by default. They're all equally likely. You just put a plus. If you don't want it to show up as often, put a minus. If you don't care, put a question mark. And it's in Roy G. Biff order in the mod settings. So let's just... Um, hang on, I need to actually count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Alright, so this should show up in the order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, they're connected because when you highlight they're connected if you have like eight google blitzes then they'll all be connected most likely if you have more than eight then you can easily tell which which groups they belong to red quirk basically you're gonna grab instead of ones and zeros you're gonna grab numbers between zeros and six six i believe inclusively and based on the direction the particles are floating so as you can see, the wrist red one, I like to say it's going up because if you're looking at the module dead on and only caring it, caring about when it goes in front of the Google Blitz in the middle, then you can see it's going up. So red is going up, all the other, all other particles are going right or are absent. And you just read the black one normally. So let's get our stages. This is for the black Google Blitz, this is for the red one. Um, yellow, green, side blue, purple. So black one you read as normal, there's no red, orange, yellow, green, side blue, purple. Red one is a little bit different. If you look at the, um, the quirk window thing, you can see that, that there's arrows with numbers next to him. If the particle is going in the direction of the arrow, um, that particle's value is that number. So let's take a look at red. Red is going up. As you can see, if you look at the up arrow, it has a five, therefore red's value is five. Continue for the rest of the particles. All the rest of the particles are going right. Looks like it. Uh, so that means there's two for orange, yellow, there's no green so we put a zero cyan blue and purple are all two all right 
that's what you get for that stage. Um, now let's look at black again. We have red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. That is a perfect seven. So we're basically just inverting our sequence. Let's take a look at red. Red this time. You read this red, same thing, every stage, just like black. So red, the red particle on the red Kugelblitz is going right, which is two. Orange is going left, which is one. Yellow is also going left, which is one. Looks like green is going counterclockwise. You can see that. Green, that means green is three. Cyan is also going counterclockwise, which is three. Um, blue is going left, which is one, and then purple is absent. So the, the way you combine stages with red is you just add up the numbers modulo seven. So five plus two is seven becomes zero. Three, 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 five, three, two. This is our new red value. All right, seems simple enough. Let's get our, I'm stupid. Uh, let's get our next stage. Um, black is just cyan, so we're just gonna invert that bit. Let's see, red is... We have a full rainbow again. Um, let's see, red particle is going left, one. Orange is two. Yellow is going down, which is six. Green is counter, which is three. Cyan is clock, which is four. Blue is going down, yeah, and purple is going counter, which is three. Add up these digits, which comes to one, five, nine modulo seven is two, um, six, two, two, five. Yeah, seems good. Next stage. My text picker. And also, by the way, the Kugel Blitz the Kugel Blitzes can swap. Just pay attention to the actual color of the actual Kugel Blitz. This is black. This is red. Just read it as if they were like that. It doesn't really. It's not. Not nothing to worry about. Um, red and green bit swap because we're X orange stages. Okay. So red is going. Um, let's see, counterclockwise, which is three. Orange is also going counterclockwise, which is three. There's no yellow. Green is going right, which is two. Cyan is going left, which is one. Next to zero. Four, eight becomes one, two, eight becomes one, three, two, five. That's our new red value. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. So basically what you're going to do with red value is actually for the first for red, orange and yellow quirks, you apply them after you get your three digit or seven digit string. So let's get my seven digit string, shall we? This is my X coordinate, this is my Y coordinate, and that's my, Z, or my R value, which is zero, we're going clockwise. I have zero lit particles, they're all black, so that means I'm facing north. Yeah, four become plus three becomes seven, discard seven, zero. Okay, so this is what my seven digit string would be without my red quirk. For the red quirk, all that you do is add your seven digit number with what your final value for your red quirk, which becomes four, one, two, two, five, four, five. And make sure you modulo seven because, yeah. And then you just continue like normal. You convert this to your binary and blah 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 and make sure you prepend one and do the thingy where you do like blah 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 and I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Blah 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 and just input it into the module. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. Very simple. Red red quirk is very simple. Let's say you did not catch the red stages and you'd be like, how the hell do I read the XOR versions? Well let me show you. This is actually the sum um, of the first and second stages 
Smodjo 7. Um, first and second stage is Smodjo 7. If you click the module, then you get third and fourth stages. If you hold it, you go back to submission mode. Let's say I messed up again. It modules, or it combines the first, second, third, and fourth stages. So it effectively halves the number of theme oh, I did not mean to hold. It effectively halves the number of recovery stages you get. So let's look at what our final red value should be. Um, red, you can see, is going clockwise. It's much harder to see, but it is going clockwise, which is value of four. Orange is going left, which is one. Yellow is going right, which is two. Green is going left, which is one. Cyan is going counter, which is three. Blue is going right, which is two. And violet is going up, which is five. So this should be what my final R value or red Google Blitz value is. And it is, so we're good. We can convert this, the sum of these two values to our binary. Um, Prepend to one, make sure you do that. All right, and let's input. Make sure we're in submission mode. And it should be good. Yep. Bomb solved. Epic. That's how you do the red quirk. Orange. The orange quirk is very easy. It's the exact same as black, normal Google Blitz. You just XOR the bits if it's present. So let's get my orange stages. I'll get my black stages at the end. So again, red, orange, yellow, green, sign, blue, purple. That's my thing for stage one. I'm gonna grab these separately and extort them at the end because I don't have many stages. Uh, red, orange, green, blue. I lost brain cells there. Let's see. All right, since I have to grab my black stages anyway from recovery, I can just do whatever. Um, notice how the recovery for orange modulos, or no, not modulos, XORs, the bits of the first two stages. So I should have red, green, and blue. That's exactly what I have on the module. If I quickly tap the module, not over a pulse, continues to the next set of stages. We XOR these, then we should get just cyan. Yep. If you're trying to recover stages, um, all the Google Blitzes act independently until you return to submission mode. I did not get my black stages, so let's show off the thingy machine again. So this is the extra values of these are the X, the combined stages of my combined stages. So this is effectively stages one, two, three, and four all combined. So since I only have four stages, this is all I need for orange, which is red, green, sign blue, and let's grab my black my black Google list string, which is just green orange. All right, now I grab our digits again for orange as well. Red, orange, and yellow do not affect how you obtain your seven digits, so just get them normally. Seven. Also should be noted that your shape of your highlights will be different if you start on a diagonal rather than an orthogonal, if that makes sense. But it still lines up cleanly because orange lines up. And if you add an eighth line, then that would line up with line up with the end of orange. So let's grab our digits. So this is my thing. This, these are my seven digits. Let's convert them to binary. 
Um, for the orange quirk, what you can do is pair up each bit in the final orange list. I probably should label these with each um, bit group in your converted seven digits from the table. If the corresponding orange bit is a one, like this one, what you're going to do is invert the sequence, or rather invert the each bit in the digit. If it's a zero, just keep it sane. Pretty simple work. It's not. When you're done, make sure you prepend one and then convert it to your um, actually your, your actual actions. All right. So let's input this. There we go. That's orange. That's orange quirk. Congratulations! I did it. All right. Let's talk about the yellow quirk. Yellow quirk is just like the orange quirk in terms of reads, and just like normal quirk bits in terms of reading. You just XOR the bits if they're there. So let's just do yellow. Uh, red, orange, yellow. No green, sign blue, purple. That's my stage one for yellow. Stage two is going to be um, orange, green, blue. My stage three is going to be just yellow and orange. And my stage four is going to be yellow green cyan um if we let's yeah if we XOR all these together we have one zero one zero 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 one that's my that's my yellow list thingy so the last module that's a number that's not a number that's not a number um we have looks like five lit particles yeah um I did not get black so I'm just gonna grab those real quick in fact, I'm just going to grab the one soul combined stage. So my one soul combined stage for the black Google Blitz is... That. My one soul combined stage for yellow is this, which is the exact same as this. If you do put on yellow, put on purple. As you can see, red, yellow, and purple. All right, let's get back to this. Yellow, just like orange and red, you don't really care about until after you obtain your seven digits. So let me obtain those seven digits real quick. Four, fourteen, four. that's my final digit string. Let's convert this to binary. And yellow quirk, very easy. You prepend each bit of the yellow quirk to its corresponding bit group. So, let's just do that real quick. Um, you prepend one, nope. Prepend one, then you prepend zero, then you prepend one, then you prepend zero, zero. Zero, one. Very easy. Make sure you prevent one before you do your. You convert it to your brackets. If you don't, um, you will strike, and nobody likes that. All right. So obviously, with yellow, your sequence becomes slightly longer, but not too much longer, and it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy quirk to handle. So let's just input this and solve the module and make sure I can actually see the input while well, I can input. There we go. That's yellow quirk. Very easy, very simple. A lot like orange, except orange is slightly harder because I've messed it up three times in a row. All available experts, please report to room. Alright, let's take a look at the green quirk. 
The read functions exactly like red, except it does not at all. I lied. The how to read green quirk is actually is similar to red in which you get um, which you get seven numbers and they're all dependent on how the particles are rotating about the center of Google Blitz. Except green quirk is a little harder to read. And I'll just show you. Okay, focus on this red particle. Which direction is it going outwards the most? Which direction relative to the Google Blitz is it, further, is it furthest away from the Google Blitz? If you answered up, then you are correct. The farthest point away that this particle ever gets from this Google Blitz is when it's directly above it. So if you look at this chart, that means the red's value is a one. Follow this process for the rest of the rest of the particles, and if it's not present, then it's zero. Um, green is six, cyan is two, blue is not present, and purple is down, which is four. It's a little harder to read, but um, it's not too hard if you look at it from different angles while you can. So let's grab my next stage. Um, red is 2, orange is 6, yellow is also 6, green is 3, signs 3, blue is 2, Emergency and purple is 5. Um, the way you combine stages is you add up the digits modulo 7. Pretty simple. Let me just do that real quick. Um, that is 5 and 2, that is 9 times 2. Yep. Next stage. Let's grab green, I'll grab black later. Um, I'll do it like this. I'll combine stages 3 and 4. So red is going down, which is 4. Orange is not present. Yellow is 5. Green is also five. Cyan is three, I believe. Yep. Blue is not present and purple is three. Let's grab stage four. Full rainbow. Um red is six. Yeah, yeah. Um orange is also six. Yellow is five. Green is 6, cyan is 4, blue is 6, and purple is 1. Add those together, module 7 becomes 3, 6, 3, 4, 0, 6, 4. And then um, if we were about to solve the module and didn't care about recovering stages, I would just add stages on, on the fly. But I want to show you how you recover stages for green. It's a lot similar to red. You just get the combined stages of one and two. So here we have red going down right, which is three, three, orange not present. Yellow is six, six. Green is two. It's a little harder to tell because they're popping in and out of existence. Sign is 5, blue is 2, right, and then purple is also 2. If you want to get to the next set of stages, just tap. Make sure it's not over the pulse. Red is 3, 3, um, orange is 6, you can see it's peeking out over here, yellow is 3, and skip to sign, sign doesn't exist. Um, um, those, again, those other stages can combine, the combined stages can combine. So that means your, what I should have gotten for my final thing was nine times two, six, five, was something like this. Sure enough, that's probably what we'll get for 
this. Red is six. Orange is six. Yep, yellow is two. Green is six. Cyan is five. Blue is one. And then purple is also six. So yep, that's what I should have gotten. This is my full read for green. Let's grab my full green for my full read for black. It is, let's see, just red, cyan blue. Okay. Green works differently from the red, yellow, and orange quirks. So I didn't know why I sit in that order. But green is pretty simple. Instead of going, say if I was had zero lit and I started at zero zero, I was going clockwise, my thing would look like this. And blah blah blah. But instead of going one, two squares, three squares, and four squares, you actually get your number, how many squares you move per step um, from the green quirk. So I should be moving six squares, then six squares, then two, then six, and blah blah blah. So let's just demonstrate that. I should be starting at 100, or rather, um, what's that? Four, one, two, three, four. Comma three, one, two, three. One is not my first digit. Um, make sure you pay attention to your list things. I have six lists, so that means I'm going west. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, west. Actually, my since my first digit is a six, that means I'm calculating or grabbing six six squares. So my first digit is um. A one, I believe. A um, neat fact, I believe all the columns and all the rows add up to seven. Or zero when it's modulated by seven, so. Yeah. So, double check three. So, seven is eight plus one. Yeah, so my first is just a one. Um, I'm going clockwise by three. So one, two, three, I'm moving six squares again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the next digit is 10. 16 comes two, five, zero, two. My next digit is two, double checking. 15, 16, yeah, seems like it. Um, Next space starts here, I'm going clockwise three, and I only calculate two squares. So my next digit is four, convenient. My next line starts here, I'm going clockwise three. One, two, three. Um, I'm moving six, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six. Also something I failed to mention, Replace replace any zeros with sevens once you're in submission mode. So there's no way you can move zero squares. Just don't do that. No, bad. So um, that cancels out five plus eighteen. Right, six, twelve, eighteen. Yeah, which becomes four is five plus four is nine. Which becomes two. My next digit is a two. I might mini. I might need a taller table. My next digit is magenta, or magenta, which is fifth digit. One, two, three, four, five. I'm moving five in this direction. One, two, three, four, five. See, six, twelve, fourteen becomes zero. My next digit is zero. Digit after that is a one. So I'm going one, two, three. This way, one. But since I'm only moving from one, then I only grab this square. I only grab this square. But that means my next one, my next line will start from there. So six. Um, six is my next digit, and my last thing. This square is identical to this square, so that means if I were to wrap off of this square, if I were to go to the top of this square, that means I'd end up at the bottom of this square. Yeah. A little bit of logic like that. Okay, one, two. I'm moving. I'm grabbing six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are my digits. I'm grabbing four. 
five, seven, zero. Okay, that becomes four. That means this is my binary, or is, these are my digits. Convert these to binary. Prepend one. And submit. There we go. That's how you, that's how you do the green quirk. I almost forgot which quirk I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna take a day long break. I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to the sign quirk. It says blue on the module, but pretend it's sign. It says blue in the manual, pretend it's sign. How, how you're gonna read this? Exactly the same as red and green. It's actually very simple. If it's if a particle is going top left to bottom right, it's a one. It's going top right to bottom left, like the sign particle, it's a two. Else it's a zero. So let's get the read. Orange, yellow, green, sign, blue, purple. Since all, only sign exists, everything else is a zero. Since sign is going top right to bottom left, as you can see here, that means it's a two. Let's grab our next stage. We have more stuff going on. Red is a zero, orange is a one, yellow is a two. Um, green is a two, else is a Nope, sign is a one. Zero, zero. So yeah, you can see yellow and green are going along the two line and orange and sign are going along the one line. To um, combine stages, simply add the digits you get. Modulo three. Two plus one is three. Modulo three is zero. This is our new sign number. Next. Um, that is paragraph. Um, red is a two, no orange, one, no cream, sign blue, purple. Got the numbers two, one, zero, two, one, one, zero. Oops. Next stage. Um, red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. I believe. Um, two plus two is four. Modulo three is one. Mm, yep. Um, I believe this is the last module, so let me show you how recovery works. Uh, I did something wrong, oh no. Sign quirk. It just adds up the two stages that it's putting together, modulo three. Um, let me show you with all the stages combined since that was stage one and two combined, and then stage three and four. This is, this is all stages combined. As you can see, red is one. Orange is two, no yellow, green is one, sign is two, no blue, purple is two. And that's exactly what I got, so we're good. Um, I should also pick up the solution for black. And by solution, I mean the, the bits. No red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. That's my solution for black. Um, let's go back to submission mode. I have two lit. Okay. For quirks that are, or for the green, cyan, blue, and purple quirks, they affect how you move on the grid. I failed to mention this last time. I almost failed to mention it this time. Change all zeros to three, and then take your fifth bit. In this case, the cyan one, you know it's the fifth because they match the color. Yeah. Take your fifth bit. Make sure you memorize it. It's, it's two. Uh, remove it from the sequence, and then add it to every other bit. Um, let's see, four, five, three, five, four, and then modulo this by three, changing any three, any zeros back to three. So three, one, two, uh, three, two, one. So this is the um, final sequence for Cyan. 
and by sequence I mean the actual value you get for sine. The sine quirk changes how we rotate in between each step. Since there's seven steps, that means we get six things, six numbers. So let's get started. Let's actually get our starting coordinates. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is our starting coordinate. It's a three. We're going, uh, actually, first we have to start get our starting direction, which is um, two lit. So that means two clockwise from north. So that means we're facing east. We're going counter clock. We're going counterclockwise by three forty-five seconds. That's how this module works, or this quirk. You're going counterclockwise by whatever number is the first one, or going from the first to the second step. So let's go counterclockwise three. Um, this would be the direction I'm going. Counterclockwise one, two, three. In this case, we just move like normal. Um, next line starts here. We're going counterclockwise one. So instead of going this way or this way, like how we would go without quirk, we're going this way by three. This is the third line. Next line starts here. We're going counterclockwise by two. So zero, one, two. Next line starts here. We're going counterclockwise by th three. So uh, instead of zero, it's going to be one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Next step, we're going counterclockwise by two. So we ended here. Counterclockwise by two would be one, two. This is six one, so we want six cells. And the seventh one starts here. We're going counterclockwise by one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I believe I went over this in a previous quirk, but this 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 larger square is the exact same as this larger square. Just just how the extender works. So instead of wrapping here to here, we actually wrap here to here. Zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our that's our final number. Let's actually get our numbers. Um that's basically all you need to care care about is for the sign quirk. So just convert this to your, your binary. Prepend one, make sure you do that. Um, let's let's concatenate these and convert these into uh, bracket notation. And this is our input sequence. So let's 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 try it. There we go. That's how you do the sign quirk. My game is pretty loud for some reason. All right, let's move on to the next quirk, the dark blue quirk. Experts, please report to room A9. Welcome to the dark blue quirk. It's called indigo in the manual. I want you to ignore that and call it dark blue because that's how I say it and I'm the only one who does this module. Victory! Wow, rare victory text. So indigo quirk is pretty easy to read. You read it exact same as black. You just XOR the bits and it's, it's one if it's there, zero if it's not. They're pretty simple. Let's just grab it in red, orange, yellow, green, sign blue, purple. Some stuff on the screen. Um, red, orange, yellow, green, sign blue, purple. One if uh, one if the particle is there, zero if it's not. Let's get our next stage. Um, I believe that's a full rainbow except for cyan. Red, orange, yellow, green, no cyan, blue, purple. All right. Um, to bind stages, it's just XOR the bits, like it's n it's normal black Google Blitz. Let's get our next stage. Next stage is just green and purple. Let me show green, something purple. 
um, XOR these bits. That's our thing for this stage. And our last one, I believe, is on um, red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. XOR that becomes this string. And let's enter submission phase. I did not catch black. Make sure you actually read black as well as every other Google Lids, because the way I'm getting black is just striking out. Because I'm showing you how to recover the Google Blitz. So as you can see, um, the Google Blitz combined their stages for us because I struck twice and combined four stages to one. You can see it's green and cyan, green and cyan, that's exactly what we get. Let's, let me grab my black Google Blitz and it's um, string. Red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. And we're going, let's see, that's two lets, let me write that down this time. So I believe that's um, east, yeah. So before you actually start grabbing digits from here, again, blue, blue, or indigo it's called, as well as green, blue, and violet, or green, sand, and violet affect how you get digits in this table. Basically, um, put it simply, the blue kugel, the blue quirk, it affects whether you're changing from clockwise or counterclockwise. You, you got it? Okay, since you only move clockwise or counterclockwise six times because it's in between each step, that means you're grabbing the sixth bit the sixth bit is a one, so aka the one that's matching the quirk color. Invert, invert all the other bits, else just get rid of it. So in the events that instead of this as my digit string, I got this, then I would um, swap all of my other digits and then got rid of the sixth digit, and this would be whether I'm. This would dictate how I'm changing between clockwise and counter. But since that isn't the case, I got a zero. I can just take it out. This is what I'm doing. So a zero means I'm not changing between clockwise and counter, and a one means I am changing. It does not mean that zero is clockwise and one is counter. It does not mean that. So, uh, since my initial direction is counter, which I'm going to be representing with a delta, um, let me just write that down. Clock Charlie equals clockwise. Delta equals counter. If you ask me why I use these letters, it's because. Um, I like having single letters for clockwise versus scanner. Since I'm starting, uh, since I'm starting going counterclockwise because this purple bit is a one on the black cool blitz. Um, that means I put that here and invert it if this is a one. It's not a one, so I don't invert it. Um, next for the next step, I. Put down the same as the previous step and invert it if it's a one. It's not a one, so I keep it the same. Next step, same as before. Next step, this bit is a one, so I invert this to clockwise. Paste the previous one over here. This bit is a one, so I invert this. And then this bit is zero, so I just keep it the same. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be going counterclockwise for the first three and then clockwise for the fourth and counterclockwise for five and six. What does that look like? Uh, well, let, let me show you. One one zero one one zero. I believe that's here. Six six. Yeah. I'm going east, so my next one is here. I'm going counterclockwise by three. So one two three. I'm going counterclockwise by three again. 
one, two, three. I'm going counterclockwise by three again. Um, next line starts here, going one, two, or one, two, no, one, two, three. That's not right. One, two. Yep, that's where my next line is. Now I'm going clockwise by three, since that's what the the blue quirk dictated. So next up, we're going clockwise instead of counter. If I was going counter, aka if the blue quirk didn't exist, then I would continue going this way. Um, this is by magenta, and then my line would go like this and this. Or something like that. But since I'm going actually clockwise by three, I'm this would be clockwise zero, one, two, three. So I'm going down now by six since this is the sixth digit I'm grabbing. Sorry, fifth digit I'm grabbing. Moving down five. This is the start of my sixth line. I'm going counter by three. So counterclockwise would be one, two, three. Um, this is six. So one, two, three, four, five. This square is the exact same as this square. So I'm actually going to continue as if this was my previous line and end up here. And my seventh line starts here. I'm going counterclockwise by three. So counterclockwise zero, one, two, three. And I'm moving seven squares this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Let's grab my numbers. So this is my final binary string. Um, blue, the blue quirk from here does not matter since we already accounted for it. So let's just convert this to binary. Get my answer. Prepend your one. Make sure you do that. Convert these to the bracket notation. All right, and then we input this. Here we go. And that's how I do the blue quirk, or indigo quirk as they call it. This one, this color. The color that looks like that, and the vivid simpleton. Welcome to the violet quirk. This one took me the longest to learn because come on like or like the manual text is way longer but it's actually quite simple um by simple i mean it's probably the most difficult aside from indigo and i'd say maybe green blue it's it's one of the difficult ones but it's not too hard to wrap your head around because that's a pun intended so the way you read the, the Kugelblitz quirk is exactly, or the, the violet or slash purple Kugelblitz is the exact same as black. One if the particle is present, zero if it's not. XOR the individual stages to put them together. Um, red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple. So let's get our stages. Stage one is um, red, orange, yellow, no green. Cyan, no blue, purple. Um, I'll get my black thing later. Stage two is just green and blue, so I'm just gonna invert those bits. Look at that, we have a perfect rainbow. Uh, I'm stupid. Next stage is um, red, cyan, blue, yellow. So just invert those bits. Next stage is red, orange, green, cyan, purple. Extra of those. Uh, there we go. My game is frozen. There we go. Okay, we're back. And now we're at submission mode. Um, let me show you how to recover stages. Say so you mess up the sequence or your input because you don't know how to, you, you don't know your read. So as you can see, the the purple Google Blitz shows you the 
the actual stages combined. Um, let me show you all four stages combined. This is what it looks like. As you can see, it's just red and cyan. Let's get my black Google Blitz. Um, it's red, yellow, green, and purple. That's it. Okay. So what does the Violet Quirk do? I recommend you take a look at Violet Quirk and write down everything that it affects right before you even look at this thing. So once you've gotten all the stages, take your last bit, or the one that corresponds to the color of the Google Blitz. If it's a one, invert the entire rest of the bit list, else just keep it the same. In this case, it's a zero. If it, if it was a one, um, my final sequence of six, di six bits would look like this. But in this case, it was not a one, it was actually a zero, in which case I can just discard it. So, violet or purple affects how you wrap on this grid. It says like once you wrap horizontally, um, flip the grid horizontally or vertically or blah, blah, blah. So the violet Google Blitz can affect your answer in two types of ways. Case one and case two. You're going to use case one if either of the first two bits are a zero. And case two if they are both one. In this case, we have a zero in the first two bits, that's the orange bit, so we're using case one. Now, the list is ordered quite conveniently. It says third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth. So we'll look at our third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth bits. If there are one, then apply this rule. If it's a zero, don't. So in this case, we only have, we have don't apply, don't apply, apply, and don't apply. Pretty simple. So we're only applying this bit. It says, if we wrap around the grid vertically, that means we flip the grid horizontally. Now the other rules in this case, say if you like wrapping horizontally flips the grid horizontally, wrapping horizontally flips vertically, and yada yada. So basically, you go back to here, I'm using the interactive instead of the extended because you can't really use the extended for violet quirk. It says, if we wrap across the grid vertically, i.e. we're going up, 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 and we hit the top, so we're going back to bottom. Before we go back to the bottom, hit, rotate the grid horizontally, and then continue like nothing happened. In this case, if we, flip, if we wrap horizontally, say I'm going like this, it does not matter, just continue going on, wrapping normally. No more 40, no more 40 Klein bottle. You just have some, some weird wrapping rules that occasionally happen. So, let's get our six digits. Six digits. We are starting at, um, what is that, five, four, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, five, one, two, three, four. This is our first digit. Our first digit is a one. We are starting with five lit. Yeah, it looks like five lit. So um, our starting direction is five clockwise from north. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're going this direction. This is going to be our start of the next line. We're going clockwise by three. So one, two, or no, actually counter by three. That's close. One, two, three. Um, get your digits like normal. If you have other quirks, they stack, yeah. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. We're wrapping horizontally, but the rule only applies if we're wrapping vertically. One, two, three, four, five. Stopping space. Um, let's get my digits right now so I can just scrap them. Um, five, three, one. Three plus two is five. Actually, no, I can do three plus four is seven. 
is 2, 3, 7, okay, F is 0. Um, that was my magento. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, we've got space, we're going to counter by 3, yeah. Um, 1, 2, 3. Again, we're wrapping horizontally, does not matter. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Um, let's see here. Two plus five is seven, four plus three is seven, so that's one. And my last line, um, we're going to counter by three. So one, two, three. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and my seventh would be down here. Normally, you would wrap up here, but since we're wrapping vertically this time, we're gonna flip the grid horizontally. So I, I'll be, I would be going in this column, but before I place my next square, I'm gonna hit this button and I just place it. So now we're just gonna add up all the corresponding cells. So six plus one is seven. One, two, three, four, five. My last digit is a five. This is my this is my digit string. Let's just convert these to binary. Prepend one. Make sure you do that. And convert these into the bracket notation. And this is our answer. So let's input it. And there we go. That's how you do the violet quirk. Alright, welcome to Violet Quirk Case 2. Case 2 only happens if both red and orange, if the bo the first and the second bits are both one. After you reach submission mode, so let me just grab... Red, orange, yellow, green, sun with purple. This is my Violet Quirk. This is my normal clue list. Red, orange, yellow, green, sign with purple. So, because yeah, because violet work only requires six bits, you discard the first or the last bit. But if it's a one, you invert all the other bits. So let's just invert all the other bits and discard that last bit. And we don't need this one because this is the inverted sequence. Okay, I still forgot to put on no no pacing. So. Violet Quirk only happens if the first two bits are both ones. And it's dependent on the last four bits. So let's read these rules. If exactly one out of the third and fifth bits is a one, this is a third bit, this is the fifth bit, exactly one of them is a one. Shut up. Uh. Where was I? Exactly one of these bits is a 1, so this rule is true. Wrapping around will flip the grid horizontally. Let's write that down. Wrapping in any way equals horizontal wrap, where horizontal flip. If exactly one, of the, one out of the 4th and 6th bits is a 1, the 4th and 6th are both 1, which is so two of the bits are one, which is not exactly one. So this rule doesn't apply, but it's the same as this, the three and five rule, both vertical. Finally, this is always active in case two. Wrapping around will flip the grid such that all the x, all the coordinates of x, y become y, x. What does that look like? On the interactive, it's very simple. It's it's this button. All you gotta do, that's all you gotta do. So let's write that down. It's what they call an XY flip because it flips across the, I guess, negative XY axis. Yeah. But it flips the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So that's all we need from the violet quirk. All right, let's try this again. I have seven lit. My starting coordinate is one six. I start here. My sun lit, so I'm going northwest. So that means my next line starts here. I'm going clockwise by three. So three. The next line would start here. 
Uh, let's grab my first two digits first. It's a six and then 10 modulo seven is three. So my next, my third line starts here. I'm going three clockwise. So it'd be going here and then here. It would wrap around to here, but I have to flip horizontally then via the X, Y axis or get, I got to flip the X, Y coordinates or whatever. Y you know what I mean when I say X, Y. So I got to flip I gotta press this button and then this button and then continue on from here. Make sure you do it in this order. Make sure your X, Y flipping is always last because that actually fl affects that. That is, that is, you, you have to do that. That's a mouthful. Let me say that again. Make sure you flip horizontally first and then via the X, Y, or if you have vertical then vertical and then X, Y. Whatever, you do, just make sure you do the X Y flipping last because that that actually matters. If you do it first, it's completely different rotation slash flipping than if you did it last. So where was I? From here, I was going in this direction. So this is my first square. This is my second square. My third square would be here, but I have to wrap around here before I land on this square. I have to flip the grid horizontally and then via the xy axis and then my third square would be there and then my next line would be start here so i flip to here or wrap to here then i flip the grid there we go so i'm going clockwise by three now it's going this way my next line would go in this direction i'm gonna get my third digit is your plus six Plus two is eight becomes one. So let's continue from my fourth line. I was going in the upwards direction. I would drop to here, but I have to flip the grid and rotate via the x, y axis and then continue onwards. That's in my fourth line. My fifth line starts here. Um, my fourth line adds up to this is eight. 2 is 10, Macho 7 is 3. Alright, alright. My fifth line starts here. I have to go clockwise by 3, so 1, 2, 3. My next square would be here in this second to last row. It actually be this square, but I have to flip horizontally and then be the xy axis. 1, 2. I have to flip to here, so I have to wrap to here. Flip horizontally via the xy axis. Uh, this is my fifth line, so it's fifth, five squares. Six plus six plus six plus six is 24 plus 28. 28 modulo seven is zero. Yes. My next line starts here. I'm going clockwise by three. So one, two, three. And then my, since the sixth line has to have six squares, it would be here. But I have to flip horizontally, then do the xy axis, and then continue on. Six plus one is seven, three plus four is seven, zero plus zero is zero, so the next digit is zero. And lastly, my final line starts here. I was going left, but I'm going clockwise by three, so now I'm going to northeast. First square, second square, third square would be here. Let's flip the grid. Fourth square would be here. Flip the grid. And that is my last line. So, let's see, this part equals zero. Three plus two is five. Last year is six. Double check. Eight becomes one. One plus six is seven becomes zero. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So yeah, that is my final binary digit string. Let's convert this to binary. Prepend 1, always important. And convert to backward notation. And let's submit. And that is Violet Quirk. Definitely one of the harder quirks if you include case two, but 
or if you get case 2. But nothing you can't handle if you just double check and make sure you're always doing the wrapping rules when you wrap around. Because you can't use the extended because the extended doesn't compensate for ballot work. Anyways, that's been my tutorial. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. I am going to... Yeah. I might show a video of me doing all eight, all seven works at the same time, but... No.